Welcome to part two, who benefits from innovation and how do wages naturally rise? Remember the colony from the previous video? It was filled with workers unable to bargain for more than the bare minimum because all land was claimed and landowners who took the difference between the productivity of labor and actual wages as economic rent. Well, good news everyone, a worker has invented a new drill to reach deeper ore in tougher rock. This labor-saving tool will surely be a boon to the economy, ushering in a new wave of prosperity and wealth. First, the old mine increases in yield, becoming more valuable as an asset to the colony. Next, the colonists realize that some low-quality farm plots near the mine can now be used to extract ore, raising their output. The worker's position is unchanged. All land is claimed and they can still only choose between working and starving. The landowners end up pocketing the increased productivity. Well, not all land is claimed. There are more plots available. They were just too poor to be economically useful. No one will work for less than 10,000, so no one could be bothered. A worker realizes these plots can support a higher wage thanks to the new drill. She claims one, which signals there's an alternative to subsistence wages. Workers actually have a good bargaining chip. Landowners must pay at least as good as the free land or lose hands. All labor in the colony benefits, and it seems the new invention has made everyone better off. But when more settlers come for the open land, the ability to bargain is lost and wages return to the minimum 10,000. Landlords again capture all the increased output. New inventions open up land and temporarily raise wages, but over the long term, landowners absorb production increases and the only way to raise worker share of wages is to ensure they always have the ability to refuse landowners lowball offers. Georgism has an answer for this as well.